Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, welcome to the Noman Art Jam stream. My name is Josh Herman. Uh, in case you've never seen one of these before, uh, we're going to be sculpting some stuff in ZBrush today. I guess I should make sure that my tablet works, and then I'm going to get the share screen going in a minute. Perfect. All right, so in case you haven't seen before, uh, we've been sculpting in ZBrush quite a bit. The previous two or three streams, we uh, worked our way up through some of the progressions of some of the previous uh, saves. We've been working on kind of one one character off and on uh, that kind of has a companion. And so we're going to, I'll show you guys what I have with that uh, in just a sec. I know you guys can't see anything and kind of where we've gotten to. And then we'll continue. So I'm going to add this i'm going to share audio as well so you guys should be able to see my screen right now let me get some music playing in the background if the sound is too loud if you guys can't hear me if there's any issues uh, as always please just let me know there we go and like I said, if you guys have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. And they can be about Nomen things. This is the Nomen channel. So if you guys have questions about Nomen's classes, curriculum, programs, uh, just general things about Nomen or questions about schooling or education, happy to answer those. Uh, and as always, whatever I'm working on, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions about that. And I will be uh, do my best to answer those. So today, uh, again, to do a little recap. This is what we had kind of worked on. This was the first character that we worked on several weeks ago. Uh, we ended up making a, uh, a companion spider. We decided this would be some sort of Halloween spider and themed thing. And then uh, over the several weeks, we have expanded on that and created a couple iterations on that to where this is the version of the character now. I did end up kind of putting a sort of a little setting here by just putting in some planes so we get those out of the way so we can focus back here so we went from uh this oh my leg is now in the way of course this to this over the course of our time and then if we look at our companion or our spider creature uh, from this, which is pretty straightforward, to something that's getting a little different, uh, kind of feels almost more crab-like or something like that, which is intentional. Uh, we also found some reference, so we pulled up some reference and ended up uh, working on that. But today, I think what we're going to work on is probably uh, a couple things. I think we're going to start working on what the overall composition of this should be, what the illustration of this should be, and uh, then maybe making some steps to get there. So we might be jumping into the Quixel Bridge uh, and the Megascans library today. And we also um, will probably do some sculpting on both the character and the creature for a little bit to just further this a little bit along. Uh, but first, what I want to do is jump into some ideas for composition. Now, I created this little dress or there's a couple dresses now on top of themselves. Kind of a pose. You see there's this character. And then this character so sort of a stepping pose which i was kind of enjoying uh, that we would need to figure out so i definitely want to figure out what this is going to be i thought of you know sort of a walking towards the camera situation uh it could be walking you know we could do another scene where it's almost walking like this way uh, but i want to figure out how this character is going to be a part of that and so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to make a folder for the spider so a new folder I'll just drag this stuff in here. This is a really easy way to just organize things because now you can take the whole folder and hide the whole folder. Uh, I still have something selected in there. Another great thing about this is you can just uh, very easily, you know, move things around, which is great. So, which is pretty cool. Oh. Well, that's just the new gizmo. Um, 
Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Big fan of the folders and all the stuff that they've been adding in ZBrush. Hello, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. So again, we're going to figure out what our composition is for this. And one of the something I was liking uh, about this before was their sort of idea of like constantly like being enveloped and like if you, you can't kind of escape. So that's definitely one an element that I want to add. And I think there's already even just like in the way that it's posed right now, I think there would be some fun ways to kind of uh, simulate the depth, right? We could put some of this in the foreground here and we could use some of these in the background to show the size and kind of figuring out also where we're going to put the character and how that's going to be. Uh, ZBrush, one of the downsides is its camera doesn't handle depth terribly well. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, and if we're going to render in ZBrush, something else like a key shot, or so if we're going to render in a Maya, uh, is all going to kind of depend on what we want to do here. And we'll probably also need to swap the body there. And just get a little bit further in the body as far as the design, as far as the, the design is getting there, but as far as like what the um, overall character is going to look like. Also just posted in the chat, uh, Adam Hartel, or Nomen Rep, is here. So if you guys have any Nomen-related questions, please feel free to ask them. I'm very happy to answer myself, but Adam is also here. And he can also connect you to our admissions team who can uh, give you some information about our classes. Uh, and if you're interested in taking a class or uh, doing a full-time program at Nomen, that's the best people to speak to. So if you have questions, as always, uh, reach out to them. All right, I'm still debating if I want to jump straight into composition. The reason I'm debating that right now is sometimes uh, I find it a little easier to to block out what my final image is going to be if I know what the pose is going to be. Uh, not that I'm going to sculpt in pose, sometimes I do, but I might, um, you know, put more information in a certain place and I you know, maybe not waste as much time I think I may go to the um, the scent beats. I was liking those more last week. Here we go. Let's see. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> what to do? What to do? I think we're going to try to set up a pose. All right, so I'm gonna, we already have this all saved. I'm gonna take this and hide it for just a minute. We're gonna we're gonna do a quick little paint over to see where we could take this. So this is a saved version. I do kind of just want to work on this character a little bit today. I feel like we haven't really taken it to where it needs to go.
We'll do something kind of like this. We can always adjust from here. And then now we're going to take this spider. Maybe put this in here. I'm not sure if I want to put that in or not. I kind of like the overall silhouette that it makes. But now we'll work on these bits. Gonna go all low. Transpose set. I should be able to move this all. There we go. Maybe a little further back so it's not just like right up in the face. I think I might this is all one piece the rest of it is going to kind of move around so I don't really have a problem just moving that it seems like it went real, real far Oh, I think it was hidden. There we go. Turn off her this. I think I just want to raise the whole thing. I like the stance of it for the, the kind of the normal posing. Uh, but I do want to just kind of get a little bit of it out of the way. If we're just going to have it standing here, I don't want it to be like looking like it's like if you were to take a photo and there's like a weird tangent, it looks like you're standing in front of a plant or something and like your head looks like it's now part of the plant. That's what I'm trying to avoid here, basically. That this thing could like already be here. So I'm just going to move it. Kind of bringing it off center, thinking about an angle, something like this, and then uh, I'm going to continue with this. Did create a plane in here so I can use this. Uh, right now, it's not really set up to her, her feet, so I'm going to do that really quickly, which will make as the floor plane. And then we can take this. And use that as our sort of uh, puppeteer area.
to figure out how this is going to work. I just want to do symmetrical, though. I think that might be cool. It would definitely be easier in some ways. Undo that. I'm unsure of what I really want to do with this, so I think what I'm going to do is just work on the character for a little while until I figure that out. And do this head turn, body turn. Get back to where we were. Cool. This should be the one without anything moved on it. All right. And let's hide this. So we're going to just break this apart and kind of continue to sculpt on this for a little while instead. Um, we'll get to the composition eventually of what I'm thinking. You know, something I'll often do. Like we'll just we'll just do a quick one. Uh, I guess. To give you an example, but we'll get something like this. Well, I'm going to uh, just do a render of it. And change my document to a single color. And if you want, you can uh, click this. Oh, okay. Uh, you can click this and you can make the background a different color. Often I kind of work in like almost a monotone a grayscale. So choosing something that is woo, very bright like that will definitely uh, make it easier to pick if you want. You can do a render render, uh, which is also fine, which means you go into render, uh, click this button, you can tear it off. And if you go render pass, and if you hit BPR, which is right here, you get shadows, which is also pretty cool. You can adjust the shadows if you like under the light setting. So we'll kind of play around with that. Maybe get some more top light. I like that a little bit. Maybe a little too far. Can always play that up when we want to. Uh, you can go to your shadows here and set with these settings. Blur or angle are going to be the ones that are going to add the most uh, variation into what you're doing. Uh, typically what I would do is add like an angle of like 5 to 10. And what you'll notice is those very sharp shadows get a little blurrier. I'll make it like 15. See, so they get a little softer. So I'm going to do uh, that. Every time I hit BPR, you're going to notice the render pass. It's going to have a composited version. It's also going to have a depth, and it's going to have a mask. I'm going to clip the composite. We'll just put it in here. What is it saving it as? Right now, it's trying to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to have it export as a PSD. And I'm also going to get that mask out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also just for fun going to get that spider. 
I'm going to hide everything else. Everything else is going away. Same kind of thing. I can create a mask or I can a render of this if I'd like. I'm just doing this as an element right now. So it's in there, I'm going to take out this one. And I'm going to take out this one. And then we'll open up Photoshop. So we're going to get these all in here. These are our masks and these are our composites. So I'm going to copy the mask into this one. I'm going to close it. And same thing, I'm going to copy these into this one. Should have all four. So I can close these. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of select them and start uh, pulling out the elements. So grabbing this, uh, I can go into the channels here, control click to get the uh, mask, and then delete the element around it. So now we have this element by itself. I'm going to lighten this background just a little bit so we can actually see what we're working on. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this spider. So I'm going to go into channels, control click on RGB. See that gets a little dancing ants around everything. Then I can go back into my, or this is just for a mock-up. This is not to make like the cleanest thing we've ever seen, but now I'll have this element by itself as well. I can delete those masks, hide the spider, and I'm going to crop our image here I'm going to use the crop tool to make it much larger. The idea here is that now we have kind of a playground where I can take this and kind of start painting around on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a layer on top. I'm going to make the layer red. Uh, for me, red is a visual indicator of a layer that basically means, um, you know, I don't, it's a painting layer. So I don't want to spend uh, a ton of time, like, you know, spending just trying to figure uh, out what my layer system is. So for me, I kind of have a pretty standard setup, which is a red layer for me as a painting layer and a um, orange, purple layer, indigo is what I think they actually call it, is gonna be an overlay layer, violet is the color. Uh, I am looking for my uh, brushes because for some reason my brush pack got it uninstalled. So I'm gonna F5 here brushes add new brushes or import brushes navigate to them hit okay so now you'll see i have my josh's brushes over here uh you can obviously install whatever brushes you like this is the ones that i've taken which are mostly a collection of other people's like shaddy safari from one um pixel brush and dan levisi so that's just kind of these ones that I use. Uh, but any brush is going to be good for you. That is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to just make it black and white. So I'm removing all the color from this. And I'm going to choose some a brush that I like. This is what I'm looking at. I'm going to start just with some initial painting uh, in a, a, a brush. I'm going to use, uh, he's named a lot of these Game of Thrones styles, so you can kind of sense a little bit of what they do. I quite like this Marlowe brush, which he's created, which is from The Wire. So with this, we can kind of come in and use black and use white to simulate some textures. So black and white. Uh, to either paint or to kind of get some ideas across. And this is also a really good idea if you want to push your design a little bit further or figure out what you want to do. So right now I kind of like that there's like this little area here, but I kind of want to push that a little bit further. And the thing that I like about doing this, and this is a technique that uh, I've used before, 
in um, my most recent Millman DVD, but it's a really good way to explore shapes without having to spend the time to sculpt them. And I like using just black and white here because I can just focus on the values of what I want this to be. I could obviously use any of these if I want. If I want to highlight certain areas of what this is going to be. And at this point, I am starting to think about overall composition for this. So you can already see just a little bit of what the before and after does. I'll zoom in a little bit. I don't usually, it's just so you guys can have a little bit of a better view. I don't normally work this close, so what I'm actually going to do for myself, it might look weird, but I'm going to take a little half step, half step back so that I can be as far away from this thing as possible. Uh, something else you can do that is can be successful is to pull open your navigator, so window navigator which creates another little tiny window, which is this one. And you can use this very similar to ZBrush, but you can use this as uh, like looking, making sure you have your whole image in mind. And you can also pull this on your second monitor if you have one, so you can take a look at it. getting some Lilith vibes from Diablo. That's fine. I'm totally cool with that. I do want to get some ideas in here for some of the costume. So again, this is just the quick paint over that we're doing. These brushes are really good for this. So I've already kind of sketched out some of these ideas. And I did have an idea for like what that dress could be. I love this brush because it's like kind of has a you can push really hard and it's like a firm brush or you can be like soft with it and it'll have like a gradient depending on the way that you brush so it can be like nice to try to illustrate certain uh, fabrics or clothing you know things that could hang off or whatever you want to do and when i'm working on a project this is something that i might show a client you know if it gets to something that's resolved enough or if they're really wanting to see it but often, this is mostly stuff that I do just for myself. So if I want to explore any ideas of maybe what the costume could be, is there going to be more to this? You know, does she have bits to the costume that weren't in the sculpt that I might want to explore? Kind of like the idea. You know, it's obviously webbing is something we're exploring here. So I could be doing, coming in with some whites and some other colors as well. But again, this is just value. So I'm not really exploring color so much as I am. Just values. And at this point, I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to toss it behind them again. I mark them red if I'm painting on them. And let's explore some of the things over here. So I do want to do some larger elements in the back. And there's some really good brushes in here for this. Uh, this is a very strong brush. And this McNulty brush has some really cool uh, textures in it when you kind of brush around, which I'm thinking might create some cool elements here. Now, we do obviously have this guy. I would want to be quite large in this. We're going to take these two down here. Get rid of that brush palette. group these let's 
So I gotta duplicate this around. Pull out a little bit and rotate. Some ideas I think we saw in the chat already, but kind of get some stuff like this maybe. Again, this is just sort of like um, compositional is really all we're looking for here. So I can also come in with this and I will with another layer. We'll delete that one and just kind of come in with some ideas. Erase. Not be too precious with this. This is just for composition and just to get a sense of what it could look like or feel like. Some of these, I like the ideas of kind of what's happening here, that there might be a lot of elements in this area, in this image, that don't have, that aren't specifically the legs, you know? But there's this sort of uh, other, other things in the scene that might cause, whether they're sticks or whether they're webbing or whether they're whatever they are, right? But they could create some interesting shapes. Just grabbing it, kind of warping this. Take this, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to flip it horizontal. Here. Obviously, right now, this is just symmetrical. There is a drawing uh, symmetry feature, so we'll probably use that in a minute just to kind of get a little bit further along here. And I'm going to just uh, group all this into one thing. Am I left-handed or right-handed? The camera's just reversed. I am right-handed. The camera is, uh, I think it's for some reason, is reversed. Not entirely sure why. All right, so we're going to make one more thing in the back here. I want these to be very close to the camera and that's something else to be farther in the camera. So what I'm going to do is just kind of gently create almost like a, you know, a perspective of where where is the horizon line, right? Is the horizon line up here? Is the horizon line like way down here? Where is the background? Like, where is this going to be? And I think for me, it's probably somewhere in here. Something that's important with horizon lines and something we want to be aware of is, especially creating a character where I'm, I'm kind of somewhat intentionally, I have painting on top of this, somewhat intentionally, everything is pointing this direction, right? Uh, you need to be aware that sometimes that can be a little too much in an image. So we got to be somewhat careful of that. So kind of figuring out what our perspective is going to be, where that's going to be. is probably like here. And I like to use some of these brushes, which are fun, that will have, you know, textures to them. So come in, like this is a really large chalk brush. I'm going to go on top of that. Chalk brushes, texture brushes, Cloud brushes, smoke brushes, detail brushes, all these kind of things that will give you kind of effects. All right, so things like this are great for this because what I can do is just kind of come in. It looks like I did paint on top of that, which was not super intentional. But I could come in and, and kind of create a, a bit of an atmosphere in here. 
Get rid of those brushes. Uh, and one of the features I was actually going to use and didn't, we'll delete all that. We'll delete all this. Uh, is the mirror feature. So vertical. You can set where you want it to go. And then whenever you paint, it, it goes on both sides. So this is a feature that Photoshop has had somewhat recently. It is nice to be able to do that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can kind of focus on this, on uh, different parts. This, and I do like this Marlowe brush quite a bit. <laughs> the uh, Caldrago brush is also pretty fun. And it has this really, for this one specifically, has a cool, almost webby pattern inside of it. So I might use that. What do I want this set to be is kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. If I paint right now, it's going to be on top of her. So maybe we'll try to find a balance. Here we go. Very dark behind here. You know that these are some of those legs. Maybe there's a bunch of these elements that are kind of creating these shapes that will be almost up to the viewer to pick out. Kind of like the idea. Okay, that is just in my drawing. Trying to get the, uh, put a mask on this element so that it can still hang in there. But it's doing some weird stuff to me, so I'm going to try to paint it out. Probably what I didn't do is I didn't make any of these grayscale. So I make these all grayscale. Because I kept noticing this was in color and I was like, something feels weird here. So now that I've done that, I can come in. Maybe we'll get back in some of this white as well on this. blacks like we can start really starting to define i'm going to take some of this out now but um what some of these shapes could be It's Halloween, or it's almost Halloween, so we got to put some webs in here. Somebody's saying lower the spider a little bit, so we can try that. We want to bring it like in here, yeah. OK, 
kind of like the idea of maybe just doing this. At this point, I'm not very precious about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm painting at this point. This is an illustration. I'm willing to explore other shapes. I'm willing to explore, you know, what the final is going to be. And it doesn't have to be what I had already done. Like I said, so this is just kind of an exploration. So perfectly symmetrical, so now I can adjust that later. You know, like right now, I'm kind of missing a central focus, right? I'm missing... It's, it's all pointing to her, and I think that's something that's working, right? Like this is basically creating arrows that point right here. I don't know if I would want that as much. It feels like right now there's just too much going on there. I would probably want something that's going to... In here is nice. I would probably dial it back. So use the opacity. Since I'm just using black and white, I can use the opacity to just push the transparency of an object, which just kind of happens to do the um, value of it as well. Same with this. Like I painted this really heavy streaks here. I could dial this back considerably to add just like a general tone. Kind of see the texture in there though, so it doesn't. I'm not in love with that. This one for a little bit though. Kind of trying to figure out what there could be here around the base. Trying to not paint in pure black because it'll really uh, kind of suck out the like the the subtle contrast that I'm trying to create. So kind of this like little I like how these lines that I had created on the the floor were pointing at her. So I'm going to take those and kind of run with them a little bit, and uh, I'm going to turn symmetry off for a minute and kind of just have some of them like you know coming in. Some of them can come forward. We can have these little shapes here. Um, this vibe. We'll turn symmetry back on. Again, this is, doesn't need to be and very likely. I mean, I would be modeling in 3D, so some of it definitely would be symmetrical. Um, but it doesn't have to be. What I would want to do for sure now is to take something. I've already done it a little bit, but I'm going to take it here. I'm going to turn this object and make it like a big, uh, large black object, maybe. Turn symmetry off. So it's like as something gets closer to the camera, typically it has more contrast. Uh, so this is where this could be something that could have a little bit more, a little bit more contrast. And maybe it's, you know, we get to see a little bit of detail here, but we could also at this point blur that. If we wanted to have sort of some foreground elements. Underneath that, we can add some other things. I might just take this, uh, duplicate it, invert it horizontally, and then maybe just like kind of rotate it so there's a second one that's kind of going here. And these just might be our, our foreground elements, and they could probably even be 
slightly larger and we would want to put a little bit of texture in them i think if they're going to be something that's going to encompass this so like what do we got this one is quite a bit of texture so i can put some like maybe sprinkling of like maybe that'll work mm, kind of feels like a star field so maybe we'll avoid that Not sure I'm liking those, but it's a, something we can start with. Right now, everything is, we're starting to get a sense, I think, of the room, uh, but I'm not in love with how the, how the um, depth is sitting right now. So we're going to have to work on that for sure. So something I would probably want to do at this point just to kind of give you a quick idea of that is uh, we're going to draw a couple more elements in here that will just uh, shape wise, you know, create some something. I kind of want to create this, uh, you know, classic spider web look, which is kind of like this, right, with kind of things coming out of it. But I also don't want it to feel like it's in like a pie or something. So. some of these elements i'm starting to try to attempt to kind of bridge these could also some of these could also be inverted which might be interesting All right, and I'm going to do one little quick painting pass on the spider back here. Actually, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole thing at this point, and I'm basically going to uh, create another layer, and I'm going to mark it as a violet layer. A violet layer for me means that it's an overlay layer. So what I can do now is just hit overlay. And overlay uh, works kind of in a way it's going to push some things forward and it's going to push some things back. So when I'm painting with pure white, notice that it doesn't go pure white. And when I'm going into a pure black, it, it, uh, let's see what colors I'm on. It does go to a pure black, but it doesn't destroy anything that's that was close to white. And what I use this for is I kind of use this as a way to push the depth and to, to start finding uh, where areas of this uh, scene are now i can go into fortunately some i have some of these things here i still have my mask here so what that means is i could use my mask and either paint within it or i can invert my mask hide my mask and still paint which means i could push everything around so if this is the focal point that i want i can find a way to create that focal point using a, a, a layer now if i want the center to me it feels like i probably want uh, this scene to have more light in the center and maybe she's silhouetted and then what I would probably do is then darken all of the top this is the first starting point I think of creating a little bit more composition to the scene we've already done a lot of the general like um setting some elements in the scene setting where the floor is right kind of going like that but this sort of element and adding these elements are going to be where we're going to create that a little further. I'm going, to, I'm going to darken these areas kind of here on the side. And we're going to make this a very kind of classic vignetted thing. I want this to generally have, uh, so I, I do kind of somewhat intentionally want this to have a, a classic-ish tone of, of like something that's creepy that you might see on like a book illustration or uh, something like that. So I, I do want the viewer to look in a very specific place. And I think that is kind of here. This is actually reminiscent of, of a recent or the recent uh, Noman DVD I did, which was a very symmetrical scene with a woman in the middle and a kind of a cast light that kind of came down like this on her. So kind of like hide that mask. Something like this. She's 
it's, it's, it's like this pool of light and everything else is kind of in this this So it's another thing that we could continue to do. I could set this to overlay or to soft light. Uh, these will all continue to do very similar things. So this is, it. this is it with it off. This is it with it on. So I do like some of these elements that it's creating. All right, so this is the initial one that we did. And we can play with some of these, turning them off and on. Like I kind of like the one here with just this kind of central column of light and um, not adding crazy amounts of contrast to the outside, but I do want a little bit of that there. So I'm going to dial that down again, because I do want the viewer to be able to see some of it. I don't want it to be complete blackness and we'll add a little bit more here. This is a good time. If you've got any of these brushes that you want to explore around with water brushes, you'll see things will do fancy things like this create some nice texture foliage there's a brush here that does this kind of foliage so maybe we'll do here and just create some of this texture in the background that's a little heavy and or a little large but we can maybe uh, try an idea where we I'm using white which is totally fine uh, what you'll see that I very often do is I'll use white or a, a pure color like that and then i'll i'll sprinkle in what i want it to do and then i'll like i'm using some of these shapes here maybe it's catching some of this light that's on the ground and then i'll dial back the opacity of it except i think i just painted that on that whole layer which is not really what i wanted it's okay. Uh, I can also come in here. I can use levels, which I'll bring over onto this screen. And you can kind of clamp the levels from the top and the bottom. So I can basically take the white that I had. And if it was too much, sometimes what I'll do is I'll duplicate the layer, which is control J, hide that layer, go back to the bottom layer, bring my levels, clamp the levels and say, okay, I want like just some of this to peek through over here, this detail turn this other one on and then I'll use an eraser to get rid of some of what I had so I can make it feel like the area that should be getting that much light is going to get that much light. Uh, fun fact, you can also use an eraser with a textured brush so you can use the same brush as well to kind of sprinkle some of that around so it's not like a big element so bring in some of that in. and we can do the same thing with the black as well to add a little more depth to that don't entirely know what i'm making right now i'm just exploring it uh, Amir from Facebook is asking a question. He says he thinks that this is perhaps the most elusive part of artistry for him. What would you recommend I should read up to learn more about the fundamentals of this type of design slash artwork, uh, lighting, shading, and scene development? Uh, a lot of what it is is just kind of composition. So what is the point of what I'm trying to get here? I want her to be the central focal point, right? She's going to be the focal point. This is a companion. This is a secondary threat element. So just trying to find parts of this and say, what is the most important part, right? What is the most important part of this? And think about the story. That's a big thing I can just recommend uh, in general. Just think about story first. And then how you would want your lighting and how you want your shading to be you know, to, to tie into that. Uh, books and things you can recommend. Obviously, you can take composition and, and classes about that which are always recommended uh, but there's a, a book that I showed a couple weeks ago called Framed Ink Framed Ink is not within my reach otherwise I would grab it for you uh, but it's a really good book that kind of shows composition and, and kind of other elements like that so treetop brush so I'm going to just add a little bit more of that 
texture duplicate my overlay layer one more time and something that i'll often do uh some, one of my friends showed me this and uh, he i thought it was a cool technique which is he'll take um at the very top of this you can use a uh, threshold layer what this threshold layer does is it basically forces your whole image to be black and white. There's no in between. There's no gray values at all. And uh, what's great about this is it you can dial this up and down, but it kind of shows you where your values, if you would have to break your image down into two, where they are. And what it starts with, if I delete the layer again, just to kind of show you threshold is it shows you right off the bat where your image is. And this is for me is a good thing. Often I find that my images can get a little dark and they'll lack some contrast. So I'll know that like, I actually kind of want it to feel like this. So what I should do is I'm gonna turn this layer. I'm gonna go back to where it was. I think it was at 128. Oof. I'm gonna hide it. And then I'm gonna put a curves layer on this. Now I can adjust the curves here, just drag this slider around. I'm going to keep the darks roughly where they are, but I'm going to bring this, uh, the, this part here up a little bit to kind of highlight that. And also before I actually do that, I, I realized that I, I still had that mask on and it didn't seem like the, the light right now is really affecting her very much. So I'm going to duplicate or make another overlay layer probably on the top of everything. Uh, we'll use another violet layer and we'll just um, brush on this thing with something that's got a little bit of texture to it. Smoke is always good, right? If you want to create an atmosphere, like maybe you want to create some atmosphere here just in the whole bottom area rather than just the center. It's like got a smoky texture. So there might be these foreground elements. So that would be a good way for us to kind of describe them so they don't get super lost in what we're, what we're illustrating here in the darkness. Maybe not every single area needs to be perfectly described though. All right, let's get back to that violet layer, that overlay layer that I was making. And uh, speckle, I'm gonna use white. I'm trying to see if there's something that's gonna just affect this. Like, where is this light coming from right now is I guess the question. It could be something where it's being cast, you know, from a foreground element is being cast onto her. Where the shadow is going to go, that's something that's not being played into effect here at all right now. Uh, but I do want to just, I'm going to turn the symmetry off. Uh, the things you can do is you can create a lasso. This is a really good, like if you do want to do like, okay, for some reason there's a spotlight. This is a good way to do it as you can use a lasso to kind of funnel the light in a specific area and then use another brush to kind of get rid of the edges here. really just want to pump up the contrast or we can just do that anyways though and then we can use the opacity of the layer to dial that back or to dial it up now what i was saying before is i'm going to push this back i want to i think i want to create a little bit of an element of behind her which you can see, I can still paint on behind her. I think this. I tie into some of the background. I 
I've got this big headdress and all this stuff, and so I'm just kind of making uh, these shapes that I think tie in to the costume, really. And I want to create almost this sense of, like, where does the costume begin and where does the costume end? And this is just a big uh, foliage brush or texture brush. And I'm actually looking at my stream preview to kind of figure out some of this stuff. Like, where is this going? Very Rorschachy right now, so I'm going to try to tone some of that back in a minute. I'm just using the eraser to push some of that back, and I'm thinking about trying to hide some of this element here. So again, that it becomes a little more of a reveal rather than like, look up top, it's right there the whole time. This area to me still needs to go back a little bit further, but I think it's getting there. As always with the stuff we want to save. So we're kind of at the point now where I guess if you guys are just joining the stream to give you a sense of what we've started on, uh, I'm going to just group all this stuff because it's probably mostly the same. Yep. So we have been painting with an element for just this character here. We spent a little bit of time in here just painting on top of the character to give her a little bit extra costume, maybe some ideas for what we're going to do with that. And then we brought in uh, the, our spider element, which is up here. Which is out of the way. Which is up here. Just bringing this in and adding some more elements here. Looks like I duplicated that head, which is interesting. Uh, and then just starting to paint in some of our... Uh, I'll go through those in a minute. I'll turn all those off. Some background elements that we're just kind of exploring. They're just shapes, really, that are uh, it's accentuating the scene. And then adding more and more and more layers of, of lighting and of environment and... Just scene dressing, I guess. It's where we are here. And then with all of this, as I collapse those two things, or three things, uh, what we can do is use our curves layer. Again, this is to kind of focus it even further if we really want to go that much further. And uh, our threshold layer. Now, the threshold layer, this is the before the curves layer, and this is the after the curves layer. So you can see kind of what the curves layer is actually doing is it's accentuating and bringing out certain parts of the image which is uh, nice to do. So this is probably probably where I would be taking this. So I'm going to save this. I'm kind of turning off. Turn this down a little bit, maybe just halfway. And I would likely want to bring out some of these elements up top a little bit more so it kind of sticks out. But otherwise, I think we're in a pretty good spot with this as far as what we're going to do. It means we don't really have to change the pose that much. It means we don't really have to change the 
pose of the spider that much. We just need to realistically know what we need to do is create all this background stuff and figure out exactly what that's going to be. And uh, one of the ways I was going to do that is play around in the uh, bridge, which is the uh, Quixel Megascan library. So that's uh, bridge is a pretty awesome program uh, that you can definitely take a look at. We could obviously sculpt a bunch of this ourselves and it probably will sculpt a lot of it uh, or some of it. Um, but for this, what we can do is I open up the bridge in case you've never used it. Download a version. Looks like there's an update that I haven't done yet. Saving this. And again, if you haven't noticed, we've been working on this character here and this character here. And these are our our elements now that we're going to try to uh, turn into this. And then, of course, if you're a fan of any kind of color grading, this is also a point where you can do that. You can go into curves. Uh, just kind of give a sense of it. You can go to RGB and adjust different levels. So if you want to make something that's got a kind of a tone to it, right? if you want to make it more green, if you want to make it more blue or purple, this is kind of a way you can do that. Whether it's just in the highlights, I want to make the greens maybe in the shadows, right? And then maybe we'll say the blues are in the highlights. You can kind of create different types of tones this way. So kind of a fun, like kind of spookyish theme. And then obviously within this, you could, uh, what I would do is the final image, I'd probably do it this way. You could do it this way now for a test. It's just uh, copy the whole image there. And then if I don't want parts of that to be that, of so I can dial it down. But I can also just erase parts of that. of it to be that tone or if the opposite is I like that but I only want the center to be that tone or something like that as well so this is fine for me for right now that just gives you a little bit of what you can do with the, co the curves layer so it's not just about um, you know, just about adding the levels or the, the contrast it can also be about color creating as well uh, the golden ratio and perspective, uh, I don't really play into golden ratio and that kind of stuff too much. Um, I kind of just try to create a composition that's feeling good, uh, visually appealing. I don't really have a specific bar that I'm looking for in there. The aim today is uh, kind of doing this paint over, which is, again, we were using just the simple elements of the ZBrush area of the sculpt and seeing where we're going to take the illustration side of it, which I think is, is where we ended up to ended up with. From these elements here to that element there. Uh, what kind of opportunity does Noman give to the people who can't afford the tuition? Uh, there are, we do have available financial aid. We did a recent open house, which is uh, archived on our YouTube page. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about how how you can get a loan through federal aid, uh, that's the best way to, to do that. And I would recommend watching the open house. All right, so I think we got a pretty good idea of how this one could work. So I think what I'm gonna do, this doesn't involve any color. We could obviously bring in color. I do kind of like the black and white tone that we're going with, and it would make it kind of a fun thing to not have to explore the color too much. Um, jump back into ZBrush, I think. Oh, I was going to play in the, around with the bridge. So if you haven't played around with uh, Quixel Bridge, 
you can check them all out here. It's available for free. Uh, you can sign in, and all this stuff is actually available. These are assets that are textures. These are assets that are, you know, uh, let me see if I can click on collections. It's been a little slow for me today, as you'll see when it takes a second. Uh, I'll click on it over here and bring it over when it's done. It did have an update for me to download, and I said no. Uh, but you can take a look at this stuff when it loads. I think it's just not wanting me to uh, to have an older version. But we'll get to there. This stuff in a moment. All right, so you'll see the collections as this loads up. Uh, things from beach rocks, stone floors, cliffs, graffiti. Uh, there's 50 different collections. And in the collections, there's a bunch of different assets. Assets, different types of things, interiors, snow, it's tiles, fruits, right? All different kinds of things in here. And uh, you can take this apart, mix and match this, pull these apart. Uh, to find things that are great for you. So for me, like mossy stone walls might be great. This one that says the goddess temple uh, might be an interesting thing. Um, so it looks like somebody had already created something in here. There's some cool things here. So if I click on view assets, again, it's being a little slow because I didn't download the update, uh, but we could see what's in here. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to minimize this. And as this kind of pulls up, we will uh, explore some more. All right. For some reason, it's being real slow. Oh. Here we go. So it's opened it up. And uh, this is going to be all different kinds of things. I'm going to change the from cliffs, which would be cool. You know, as, and again, now what I'm doing is I'm kind of actually going to compare this to this I could make this small but I don't think it's going to be the best view for you uh, I'll make this full screen so you get a little bit more scene and maybe I'll hide the layers pull it over to the side as far as I can and then pull this open so what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at my scene and going to just start kind of breaking it down Right, saying, "Oh, what could be, what could be in the scene? What would be valuable things for me to have?" I think when I resized it, it decided that it was going to have some trouble doing that. But I'm going to look here, and I'm going to say, "Okay, you know, is this a cliff? Is this a uh, mossy floor? Is it a stone floor?" And really starting to, I didn't spend really any time, uh, you know, figuring out if this is going to be something that is what the actual materials are. So I'm going to close this. Cliff sides, these are all really cool. We could carve into these, we could sculpt into these. So if we wanted to feel like they're inside of a cave, this is a great option for us. There's obviously some older elements, some grass. Some of these will be meshes and some of these will just be textures. Uh, this is all stuff that we can play with, play around with. These columns are pretty cool. The layer rock cliff is a texture, which is pretty great. Some frescoes. So depending on what we want this structure to look like or what this inside of this could look like, uh, there's a lot that we can play around with. There's obviously a lot of other things in here. Uh, it is a little slow because, like I said, one more last time, I didn't get the I didn't get the update, so it is taking some time for this to to load. So we're not going to spend a lot of time in this today, just because it's going to take us a little too long. Uh, so what we are going to do is we're going to finalize this sculpt here. I think. There's an old mansion room. Sorry, I'm just looking through things. It's starting to go relatively faster. So you see items from a mine. See there's like mossy stone walls, for example. 
each one of these textures is something we could put on a plane or something that we sculpt. Like this is kind of an interesting texture. Again, being a little slow. Maybe I need to sign in. But yeah, this is a cool, a fun exercise now that we have an idea of where this is going to go. And so I think this is a good spot for us to start heading in. Logging in to see if that will speed it up. Having to verify something. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to ask, and I'm happy to help. Uh, whether about the process that we're going on now, uh, one question is, what should we do to get more creative? Uh, one thing that I recommend is just looking at other resources, other other references, uh, just kind of finding other things for inspiration outside of what you normally would look at uh, is always going to be a good uh, place to start, right? Anything that you can, any way you can find more influence, and that can be getting outside, right? That can be uh, doing all kinds of different things. That can be traveling. That can be reading a book, right that can be looking in reference books that can be browsing new sites finding new and interesting things uh, that you don't normally find uh, all those can be great it does look like the login actually has sped this up quite a bit so layered rocks there's some cool elements in here and what you can do with any of these i really like this one quite a bit in this one so if you click on one of course after i say that uh, it is taking a little longer. You can click this little star, and uh, it'll put it into your favorites, and you can bring come back for later. You can also grab it and download it and bring it in, which is something maybe we'll do for the next stream. I'll kind of get us a bunch of assets. We'll pull them in, and we'll try to either do a render in, in ZBrush, which could be fun, or maybe at that point I'll have it all set up, and we could do a, a render like in Redshift or Maya, which I think would be fun. So you can click this little star, and that'll add it to your favorites here. So you can see some favorites that I've downloaded if it ever blows up. Uh, but you'll see some things that I've been doing with some struts and some uh, kind of more medieval style things here, different types of these. And these, all these textures you can use uh, really well with Mixer, which is their kind of companion app, which I'll load up now as well. But you can load up any of these and... Uh, in case you've never used Mixer, it's asking me to sign in with that as well. So I'm going to do that for a second. Uh, it is a texture creation program. It's really intuitive. Uh, I think it's an awesome way also for people to understand or begin understanding how you can make textures and what textures actually do. Um, it had an error, so I'm going to try one more time. In. I don't want the new one. So this is what Mixer looks like. You can see it's similar. I'm going to close, um, minimize some of these. But any of these are that are textures you can grab and you can bring into Mixer. We'll use their jungle floor as an example. So we'll minimize and minimize these. And this is a super cool program where you can kind of drag and check out these uh, textures. Now what this is doing is it's actually loading in five different textures so we can remove these different elements and see what we're starting with. The base is just this flat gray and it's loading in these tiles, which it's using based off of a mask. And it's adding some edge details to those also based off a similar mask. Now I can hide these and we can also show maybe just the floor here but you'll see how this is using the floor and it's just filling these 
uh, levels here. Now, what my favorite thing is, is there's this threshold slider. Pushing the threshold slider up and down basically pushes it up and down based off the mask. So it's using a depth. So if we want this to just be a little bit lower, we can do that. If we want to be higher, we can. I'm just going to hide these tiles. So we just have this floor. And you see it still goes up and down. It can go into the base. Uh, but under above that, we have this moss texture. And this is kind of what the moss texture looks like right now. If I turn this on, you'll see the moss has its own threshold. And it can also go up and down, which is pretty awesome. So with this, you can add decals layer. You can add a surface layer. Adding a surface layer, you can pull in any of the textures from the Quixel bridge, which is pretty amazing. So let's say we'll go into one that is rock. We'll only search for rocks. This is kind of some of the cool ones, sharp jagged rocks, cliff layer. It's going to load it in. And you know what? Let's actually just do from the very beginning. We'll make a new mix. We'll just to kind of do a test. Nope, no saving. Open this again. This is also if you have your, I believe if you have your favorites, you can also choose those. But we'll choose this rock. Or this rock. And this is the mixer. And what the mixer does now is we can adjust. Do we want the high frequency or the low frequency of this? How jagged do we want this to be? What the threshold is? And then what we want our reflectance colors and all this to be. And it comes in with everything by default. But you can come in with another one. And let's say we want to choose something that is lava field. Sounds interesting. So it's going to load this lava field. And it has its own threshold. So you can kind of start to create these radiuses and where it's actually intersecting. I can come in, obviously, I can just delete a layer, choose another one. Uh, metal, let's see what there is in here. Moss is always a good one. So we'll say, we'll do a classic Nordic moss. And so now it's actually taking this and it's kind of adding to it, which is pretty amazing. You also have this wrap to base feature, which is going to actually put the moss more on the subject which is pretty cool. So now we have these mossy rocks as to compared to just what the rocks were. So, or they can kind of float over it a little bit. And this is Quixel Mixer, and this is a really good way for us to explore. And what we can do is we can, uh, just like we were looking at in here, we can start figuring out what we want these elements to be. What is the floor going to be? Okay, well, the floor might be this texture maybe do we want it to be jagged do we want it to be smooth do we want it to be wet do we want it to have puddles do we want it to be snowy what do we want it to be like so this is kind of what we're doing right now i don't think i want it to be this so i'm going to delete this we still have this moss which i think is a good starting point but i think i want to try to find some sort of a ground so it's our grounds now this doesn't have every single thing in the bridge right now you can go into the bridge you can explore these things like if we want to explore grounds right or we want to explore some of this stuff chipped rocks or old plaster uh, we can come in here and we can type words ground again it's been slow because i didn't do the update uh, but we could be able to search these drag them or bring them into the mixer and work with them there i did not want that one either so I got some grounds. I got some Icelandic moss, some snow, some forest floor. Forest floor might be nice. Mossy ground. Got two forest floors. So let's bring both of those in as it loads them and see how they kind of compare. Yeah, there you go. Somebody says she can be standing inside a broken tower that has dark mossy bricks with vines and the light may come from the ground where she is casting a spell which lights upon the room and the spider i like that so let's kind of bring in some of these so let's get some uh tiles let's get some floor floors this is a little two linoleum tile and this is a concrete floor maybe some rocky floor like this cliff we were looking at uh sandstone stone maybe we'll have some cobblestone which is interesting so that broken tile or this worn wall or this brick floor could be cool. So let's get in some of these as well. 
it's going to take a minute to load all these in, but we'll be able to play around with some ideas for what the floor could look like. And you can grab and just very easily drag and drop all this stuff. So some mossy floor. So we have this kind of uh, brick. We have this other one. And right now they're all on top of each other. So we have this cobblestone. We have this, uh, what are like a worn plaster wall. And we have this pristine brick, which I like quite a bit. Now what we can do with any of these is we can adjust high frequency and low frequency. So you can see we're getting a lot of these little extra details here with the high frequency. The low frequency is just kind of creating an undulation to this. And the threshold is going to move the whole thing up and down. We can also add repetitions to this. This is automatically going to tile for us if we'd like to. We're just going to go down to one, saying that the layer scale is correct. And what we can do is we can bring in any of these that were had before. So let's bring in some of that forest floor. Now the forest floor is kind of wrapping to the base right now. And I think I need to bring the threshold up. So if we want it to look like there's sort of this floor on top of this tile, we probably want to not wrap to the base at all. And we want to remove some of the base details. Preserve details. We don't have to do that. We can explore what it'll look like to see just if some of these sticks and stuff are sticking on top of that. Not super in love with that. Let's see what the other forest floor looks like. So kind of the same thing. We've got to get these sticks and things kind of sticking through this. Remove the details. We don't need to wrap to the base at all. Uh, adjust our radius. I think I want it to come from above, actually. Hmm. I don't think these are really working for me. Cobblestones, we can start tying into this as well. Uh, you can take in here, you can start adding masks or paint layers if you want to individually add that kind of stuff. But here with the cobblestones, we can start those poking through as well. I think the cobblestones are probably in general going to work better than the brick. So let's see what some of this looks like. Yeah, that feels a little bit stronger as far as just getting the idea of some of these sticks. In here, so I like this one more. Just playing around with the settings, seeing which ones are coming through. And I'm going to push it far enough through that it's, you know, some of these sticks look like they might be warping. That is okay. I'm trying to preserve some of the details. So this might be a starting point for our floor. We also have this wall, which we could bring in. I don't think I'm going to do that for this one. But we can bring in these mosses. So if we want to get a little bit of moss in here, how much do we want, right? Are we wrapping to the base? How much of the details are we keeping? Are we not wrapping to the base at all and just kind of having it settle? Or are we wrapping to the base quite a bit? And kind of having it wrap on top of some of this. And this radius is a kind of a way for us to dial this back in. So if we kind of like this green texture, which I do. We can figure out how much of that we want in there. Now... This is looking cool. I'm pretty happy with this. We can always come in and just to kind of give you guys example, there's sand, there's rock, there's soil, there's all kinds of other things. And like I said, the mixer itself has tons of this stuff uh, that we can bring in. I do like this muddy beach one, so we might bring this in as well. It's just an option. It adds a little bit of a wetness to everything, which I like quite a bit. All right, this sort of like texture of like wet... element right not as green so maybe not as much of what i want maybe i want it to wrap to the base a little bit more so it kind of just feels like it's got this general wetness to it right but something we could also do 
is bring in uh, a couple other layers. There was one that I wanted to check out, which I think was snow. Snow, pow, snow. You can also do things like this, which is cool. So if you want it to be snowy, this is a snow layer. You can bring this in. How snowy do you want it to be? A little bit, a lot of it. Do you want it to, this is a good example of like, am I wrapping to the base so it all looks like it's there? How much of the details am I keeping? Right, a little bit of the details, a lot of the bit, a lot of bit of the details. How, what's the opacity like on this? But instead of snow, one of my favorite ones to do is actually adding a uh, liquid layer. Liquid layer is pretty straightforward. It's basically a really reflective uh, layer of liquid uh, that you can push up and down. So if we want this to feel like it's a broken tower with dark mossy bricks, maybe there's some areas that have actual puddles. Puddles and like kind of an, an extra area where light could bounce could be fun. So maybe just bringing, we could do a texture. We could save this out uh, by going file uh, export to library or just quick export. And when you export this, it kind of gives you what size do you want it to be? What are all the maps that you're uh exporting are you doing displacement gloss or reflectiveness or roughness uh, and you can kind of choose the size and just kind of say where it is so we could do one that has no liquid in it and then we could have one that maybe has a little bit in it and then we could have one that is a little fully submerged kind of a thing right and that might give us a nice set of tiles that we could paint between uh you know, somewhere else, which would be cool. So I love Mixer. It's a really, really cool tool to start exploring what your what some of your uh, features could look like. So maybe I'm going to do this muddy one, I think. I'm going to bring that down. This is another option to say, oh, I just want this to be wet, right? You can do that with this one as well, I believe. Let's see. So if we bring this up, I think the radius will also do that. So if you just want it to feel like it's wet, you can kind of do that as well. And to give you guys a little bit of example of what some of these do, this has like, uh, you know, turbidity. So this is like the surface noise and this is the depth of the water. So how much of the color of this is coming through? And then the water layers also have, like if we go a little bit lower, a moistness threshold, which basically means you can make everything, even if it's not in the water, you can kind of give it a little bit of that kind of sheen. It's better to see here versus the other direction. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, this is Quixel Mixer. So you can play with all this stuff, which is pretty cool. I, I really like this this uh, program. I've been using it quite a bit for some of my my tests and taking this stuff out. You know, the, the great thing is you, this gives you all the maps that you need to uh, you know take it and put it in any program. You can put this in Blender. You can put this in uh, Max. You can put it in Maya. You can put it in ZBrush. Anything that you want to use, uh, this is great for. So I'm going to remove this little layer for the liquid. Oh. And I'm going to save because my screen just went black.
Hello again, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, seemingly, my computer decided to just shut down. One of those days. Uh, um, let me get all this stuff back up. All right. I think it was the having four different programs happening at the same time. And clearly there was something going on with the bridge that was really slowing it down. I have a feeling there was some and it being it asking me to update and it being very slow. I have a feeling there's some sort of a memory leak or something. So that's my guess. All right. So where were we? Ah, yes. Share your screen. There we go. This is what we were working on. We were using Quixel Mixer, and we've been loading this up, and you can tell it's recognizing that things didn't go so well last time. And this is the character we've been working on, and ZBrush, so we got this, and we got this, and this is the direction we're going. We were making a bunch, uh, or starting to make some uh, textures in Quixel Mixer, which is a really fun program. Uh, and we'll probably do that, or I might do that more in my own time. Now that you guys have got a little bit of a chance to see kind of how it works. Uh, cause it is a cool thing. I think it's a cool feature. You know, just the, you can also all open it up one more time so we can take a look through it. Um, but I think the coolest things about it is how, how intuitive it, it is and how you can see it's also asking me to make another one here. Like things like this, snowy mountains, for example. You can do not just if you want to make background scenes, right? Or if you want to, it doesn't just have to be a small texture. Uh, taking a different type of snowy mountain, where would I put those? You can take this stuff and you can you know, come in and say, this is just the tops of the snow. This is just the cover, right? So what it's actually doing is it's breaking this stuff down into pretty cool things where this is really just a mask or something with a noise layer on it. This is a solid with a noise layer on it. So this is a solid layer here, right? And you can add noise, which is what this is, or you just add that in general. Uh, and you're just adding textures. Right, so you're adding a mask stack, you're putting that in here. You're gonna be able to choose what you want, adding a component to the mask, adding a noise, what type of noise, we'll turn this off so you can kind of see what's happening. Right, you can figure out what this is doing to it. Uh, octaves, the type that it is. Um, it's pretty cool, like I love the ability to what it's, what it's doing here. Wrapping to base, not wrapping to base. Um, it's just cool, it does really cool stuff and it's very easy to use. And then you know the elements that it's adding on top of pulling from other textures and mega scan textures as well. So it's easy to use, cool, simple, and then of course you know for anybody who's doing you know, concept design or even this is this is viable for any part of the product, uh, the pipeline. But of course you can come in like I was just doing before with uh, liquid layers and say, oh, okay, now this is all underwater, and instead of it being this color, it's uh, this color. And now you have like an Icelandic fjord instead of, you know, the the big mountains you had or a big swamp. And, oh, okay, you want it to just look like there's little lakes here and there. There you go. Like, you could, like, we could do this pretty easily. And, like, you know, for concept design, I could take a screenshot of this and I could put this in and put it as my background and, you know, quickly do that. I could come in here with the solid itself, sorry, the mountain itself, and just play with the noise texture that's here. You can see what they're doing. It's a noise with the transform and a noise and a bevel and a ramp. It's just, it's just adjusting this, right? Open this up, change the contrast. 
a different type of mountain. Flatter mountains, higher sort of mesa mountains that seem to have some sort of a ramp on the top. So you can do really cool stuff with this very, very quickly, and it's very, very viably usable for a lot of different things, which is awesome. So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, I love this thing. So, using that for textures uh, is something that I've been doing quite a bit, and we're gonna do. I'm gonna do that at some point to get these textures kind of coming in, so we can you know, make it all look good. But for the rest of the stream, we have about an hour and 15 minutes. So what I need to do is just kind of figure out what we're going to be doing. So um, I was thinking about jumping into this and continuing to sculpt and finalize the character herself. I think that's something I would want to do. Uh, I would probably make in the image itself this be the most defined elements of the, of the sculpt, right? If you've ever looked at, at a lot of paintings or illustrations, what you probably notice is that often... Um, the center is going to be in frame and, the, and, in, and in focus, and then all around that is going to be uh, brush strokes, or it's going to be uh, blurry, or just slightly out of focus. And so, what I want to do here is find a way to um, make this a little bit more defined. Oh, one thing I was going to actually say that you can also do in Mixer as a preload the program is it doesn't have to just be for. Um, natural materials like that uh you can also we'll just like maybe we'll make, we'll open one wet mud which is a cool one it's using moisture and kind of creating these puddles you can make a new mix it's fine and you can pull up the library and there's also kinds of fabrics so if you want to pull up any different types of fabrics you have your leathers right that was not really the one that I wanted to pull. Fabric leather, white cloth, for example. So you can get a little bit of sense of this as well. And if you wanted to, you could start playing around with what this is going to look like. If you want to start combining with a couple different types of fabrics, uh, you can. You notice that it kind of doesn't do as much, maybe, as you would have hoped or as wanted it to. You can definitely see the tiling there. Uh, this is another place you can use that. So when it comes to you know, what is this character going to be wearing, uh, we can always come in here and look at look at what's in here as well. Leather, linen, uh, furniture, fabric apparently is a thing. So kind of get an idea of what all this is. We could also use this and, and again using the bridge to say like oh this is what maybe her uh dress is going to be made of what is that going to be made of is it translucent is it not translucent uh, using that as a tool all right so we're going to focus on this for the rest of the stream because this is the probably the biggest area that i really need to focus on uh to level up for the rest of this character so we're going to spend some time breaking this apart and sculpting on this character I don't hear any sound. Just wondering, a little concerned how I sound. So I'm going to mute myself real quick. Looks like I'm sounding okay. I think my. Uh, Sound settings are off. There it is. All right, let's do I got a question from Twitch. How in this instance we actually implement the mixer materials for this scene? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you a little bit here. So I've already kind of made like a cave. And right? I've already made this before the, the stream. So I would just begin adding elements to the scene and then applying them there, right? So I need to start creating 
uh, meshes and things that are going to live in here that are going to going to work for that another thing you can do with the bridge which i'm not going to load because i think that may have been part of the crash but um you can take the bridge and you can find assets themselves so if i want to get trees if i want to get branches if i want to get leaves if i want to get any of that stuff that i'm probably not going to spend a lot of time sculpting for me uh because i want to focus on the character and just the general illustration um you can get all those meshes you get all those meshes and maybe you want to make a, a tree right uh, we could just quickly, you know, like what I had here, for example, is I need to create something in the back, whatever this is going to be. Maybe that's the element that I'm going to sculpt, right? Or I'm going to create a throne or something. So we could make that and then apply that to that, that texture to it, uh, apply a couple different textures to it, texture it as if we actually wanted to texture it. That's an option we can do as well. You can do that in Mixer. So there's a lot of different ways that we could do it, but we're going to use Mixer, Mixer more as the way to uh, explore what those textures will be. But first I need to get, well, I guess, you know what, let's sculpt some, let's sculpt some props today instead of just trying to go straight to this thing. So we have this cave wall that can go away. We have this thing. Let's append cube and make some sort of a prop for her. I'm going to hide the plane. I'm going to put this above all this stuff. What we're going for is trying to mimic whatever these shapes are. What are those shapes? Got to figure them out and just kind of start sculpting. So uh, I've added a cube. I don't need it to be a cube. I'm probably going to dynamesh the cube pretty quickly. That's a lot higher than I expected. So I'm going to put it down to 64. Dynamesh that. Is she at? Oh, I want solo mode. There we go. I'm going to use, I like using the transpose line because I can squash a little easier and I can stretch kind of from a point. So I know I'm going to have something in the background here. It's probably going to be about this far away from her. And at first, what I like to do is use the Dynamesh features to do this. So I'm going to mask off a section, and I'm just going to pull out a section. Do the same thing here. I can Dynamesh every now and then so that I have a nice mesh. Take this, say maybe actually get these outsides. These are clipping curves. I'm going to start adding some dimensionality to this. Again, I'm just kind of mocking this in using Dynamesh as a feature, right? So I'm grabbing these things, pushing and pulling them. Is it exactly where I want it to be? No. It is going to get me to a place that's probably a decent starting point. Her X's. Kind of like that. Maybe that gives me an interesting area for elements, right? And at this point, I can sculpt. At any, at any point on this, I can just start sculpting, right? So I can also use our snake hook brushes. I can use our tube brushes. Okay, so at this point, like, let's say I'm going to do a little bit more sculpting on this to make it feel a little more natural and to kind of understand a little bit more what this is. I like some of the structure that's there, so I'm not going to try to lose that. I'm not going to try to maintain the cube nature of this. And this right now, I'm not going to add subdivision levels. I'm not going to go crazy. But I am just generally trying to create 
a, a mimicking of where some of the shapes are going to go. This is far too square, right? Let's make, uh, just kind of pull it out. I entirely know what's happening up here, so I'm going to just sculpt in some design elements to this. So you can see me alt tab and forth back quite a bit. Uh, I I like doing this when I'm sculpting on a project uh, where I have a con piece of concept art, which is actually something I've been considering doing on stream, is sculpting something from a piece of concept art because I haven't really done that in in a while, to be honest. Uh, so if you guys have people or artists that you would like to see or some some type of thing you'd like to see uh let me know and i'm happy to start looking through things but i like having this in the background sometimes more than to figure out how I'm going to do this and what exactly that is. But I like having this in the background more than I like um, having it on my other monitor because I can quickly just alt tab back and forth to see what I'm working on. I apologize if for the audience if it's um, a little distracting. I could see how it could be, uh, but it is kind of this way that I like to work. And anything that feels like it's in this instance for me too organic, I'm just going to start removing. We're using ZBrush today. We've been using a ZBrush for most of the art jams. Uh, we were using Wonder Draft before. We've been using Quixel Mixer uh, earlier, Photoshop as well, which is what we're in here. Um, but right now we're using ZBrush. I'm going to pull this in quite a bit. So what is this? It's some sort of a throne I'm imagining, right? And at this point, I'm going to start taking other elements. Uh, I'm going to hit B. I'm going to hit C. You can see all your curves here. This is all your, your cloth brushes and stuff. I'm going to grab our curve brush multi-tube. I'm going to do, kind of drag some stuff off like this. If you've never used a curve brush, the way that it works is it's actually based off of your cursor size. So if I have a really large brush like I just did, notice how big this element is. If I make it nice and small, it's going to be nice and small. I can also do that and adjust the size of it and tap on it. So if I do want to change that, I can. It is a cool thing to do. So there's a couple things you can do. One thing I'm going to do with this is you can adjust them after you draw them out, make it a little bigger. Right, and you can drag it around at a certain length. You can also, if you see this little red line, you can extend the curve. Right, so this can be good if you're trying to specifically get it. You know, this isn't the shape that you want, and you want it to be uh, a certain have a certain fluidity to it. I recommend actually pulling it out like this and treating it almost like a a ribbon or something that you're guiding along. What am I doing right now? I'm going to figure out what some of these are. Make it a little smaller. And I'm going to go into stroke. I'm going to tear this off here. I'm going to go to curve. Uh, curve functions, actually. I'm going to hit delete every time I don't want this. You can also snapshot, smooth, do other things with this. But I don't want these curves to be hanging around for me. Uh, while you hover over it, if you adjust this, this is actually your ability to modify the curve. It's like your influence over the curve itself. It's separate from what you're doing with the, the beginning of it. So I'm going to undo all that. We're going to get some of these things coming in. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a relatively smaller one in like this. Even smaller, maybe. And I'm just going to delete that. I'm just going to make a bunch of these. You can make them based off of the original as well. You can pull them. 
You can kind of move them. Delete, right? Delete. Maybe make a slightly larger one. Maybe something that's kind of coming from the back this way. This one I'll pull around. Like I said, I do kind of like using this as like a way to, to guide them. Delete. After they're set, they're unmasked, so you can grab them. And you can actually very easily and quickly start sculpting on these. So this is how I tend to, especially if something's chaotic like this, uh, I'm going to quickly just block in the shapes. Whatever this thing is, uh, I'm going to block in these shapes with whatever tools I have. For me, I like using the curve brushes because they're kind of a, a relatively easy way to get these base meshes in the places that I want them. I can continue doing that. with. Uh, if I hit B now, it's already going to be in my... my uh, tool or brush palette. So dragging these around. That was a massive one. But maybe that's okay. Maybe we get a couple bigger ones in here. All right, and we'll delete. Something that maybe comes back here. And again, they don't have to be tubes. This is just base meshes. So this is an element, another element that could be here. This is where some other stuff comes out or it creates another thing that could actually be up and over here. Dragging some of this around. Start adjusting it from multiple angles because when it does uh, get drawn out, it's only from one, which obviously is not really what we're looking for. So taking them and kind of moving them, smoothing them, inflating them so that maybe they have a taper to them. And at a certain point, I'm going to take all of these very likely. I'm going to split some of them off. Right now, they're all the same uh, subtool. Right, so all this stuff is one subtool right now, which is fine, but I don't want to sculpt on it like that forever. So what I'm going to do is just kind of grab some of this around, get it into a place that feels OK. And you're going to notice that it is already in sub, uh, not subtools, polygroups for me, which is great. So all I need to do is just split some of this off. So I'm just going to hide this. And I'm going to use split hidden. I'm going to make a little quick sculpting on it so I don't accidentally undo. Now I have these. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to split hidden. Do a little, maybe do like a Dynamesh on this thing. There we go. Cool. And I'm going to take these. Now the cool thing about this is I can actually just take all of these. And hold down. If I've got a, all this here. I hold down control and move, I can move the entire duplicate and move the entire group of assets. Now it's also already masked for me. Awesome. So that I can come in, I can do a couple of different things. I could either just warp the whole thing into a different direction, which is what I'm going to do to start. I'm going to move it a little bit, maybe warp it this direction quite a bit. And that's going to give me a whole nother set of things. So I don't have to spend time making those tubes every single time. A uh, question from Twitch. If you're having trouble sculpting a design, what steps do you overtake to, come the, uh, to overcome the problem? Uh, that's a great question. What I often will do is I will take a little break. The first thing I'll well, take a break is kind of number one. And is, but are, you, if you're, are you saying, I guess, like, there's two ways to answer this question. If it's something of your own design or if it's something of somebody else's design. If it's somebody else's design, uh, critique, and just in general, critique is always going to be great. It's something I recommend in general uh, from yourself or from, uh, from other people. If you're critiquing yourself, what I like doing is I like taking a break. I like what I'll do is I would basically take like a screenshot of this. I would put it up on my 
a computer in Photoshop or something like that. And then I'd walk away and I'd walk away and I'd come back a couple hours later, at least 30 minutes to an hour later and sit down and, and almost treat it as if I was the art director from myself. And I would come in and I would, uh, Take myself, well, how could this be better? What could make this better? And it's kind of start from there. Now, this is taking some of the elements that I had and it's starting to get them. I'm going to duplicate um, this. And now uh, duplicate any unmasked area by unmasking it or making it the unmasked thing and using control. And I'm going to thin out some of this stuff and just make some of these items. I do want to play around with dynamics on this very briefly. Uh, I want to see where, where the floor is, which is a little low for some reason. Just probably because why? Something's that low. This is. Move it up. So should pull the floor up a little bit. Hide this, hide this, change songs. I wanna play around with this idea very quickly. I'm gonna save as you always should every now and then. Saving multiple files of something is never a bad idea. And I'm gonna take this one. Mask like this, I guess. Dynamics. It's adding a little bit of like a naturalism, which I kind of like, and it's adding all this stuff on the floor, which I like. So that's kind of cool. It's definitely got some areas of this that I'm not in love with. But it is creating like all this texture on the floor, I guess, before and after. It's kind of creating some fun uh, little shapes in there. I'm going to keep those. realized they didn't have symmetry on there for a second. So what I'm going to do is uh, go into geometry, modify topology, mirror, and weld. I got the wrong side over here. It's not that big of a deal. Make sure my symmetry is on from now on. Maybe for some of these, like I do want to click, almost go to like a thicket. Because that what we were kind of having before was like this stuff back here, and I'd like to figure out what that could be. Always, of course, do the same thing I did at the very beginning, which is duplicate the whole section. Some areas are maybe a little too iconic now, so I'm going to move those out of the way. Right, let's take some of these. I'm going to take this up. All right.
I like how this is almost like spider-like in its own way. It's sort of creating those vibes, even though it isn't that. I think that's something I'm liking. What I kind of want to do, I did have this cave wall that I made, which is now far too large. I just like to leave this. What's going to happen is this is a plane. If I dynamesh it, it's probably going to look really bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is correct. How do you have a, how do you make a cobweb and ZBrush and have them tear realistically? Say if she would stand up for the throne all the cobs of webs would be pulled and teared. That's a cool idea. Um, how could we do that? I bet you there's some, a, a cool way to do that with the new dynamics, but I frankly don't know the answer to that right now. I'm going to bring in some of these elements back here. It's obviously very low res. This is only a hundred or sorry, a thousand points. You want to dynamesh it because it's probably going to be better that for that. Um, because if I just, there's like a lot of polys sitting in this area that are not going to be used. Uh, so I kind of want to do that. I'm just going to add some subdivisions though. Not sure what these are yet. So many meshes sitting on top of themselves. This is kind of a, a way that I like to work, which is I like to build up to the scene. You know, so there's stuff here that I'll probably add in. This is where I could start adding in, you know, what is like what is the final scene? And that's why I did, you know, the illustration here to have an idea of what it would look like. Um, and you know now I can kind of start adding those elements one at a time and whether that's figuring out what the floor is going to be or whether that's uh, you know whatever it's it's relatively simple to just start picking them out think, oh, okay I need to sculpt this section or I need to make this thing or I need to figure out what this this location is or you know it's it's not it kind of takes it into being something that's very nebulous right you know like at the beginning of the stream we didn't have uh, we didn't have this, so we didn't know what we would be making. And now it's like, okay, I now have a, a decent idea of what that could be, but I still need to spend some time actually making it and actually figuring out what those textures would be or what those, what everything here would be. This is part of the fun for me is it's like you're exploring, 
right? You're exploring all the time with what this stuff is. And sometimes you get a happy accident. Sometimes you get something that's working really well. Uh, sometimes you're just exploring and then nothing works, right? Now I can start taking this guy and say, okay, okay I'm going to actually pose you where I think this should be. So I'm going to move. Transpose the whole set. Maybe even a little tiny bit smaller. Big is cool, right? Like I think from a, a cinematic standpoint, big is great. But for the illustration, I think it needs to be something that's a little tinier. I mean, I could try it this way too, though. I'm going to copy everything, paste it. Oh, God. Double size it. Painting that out. Probably need to like keep what I think I'm losing right now, which is like the I think bigger is kind of nice. So maybe we'll just keep it as what it was. The thing that I like doing about this is that there's not really a point in time, you know, where it's like the design stops. This is kind of why I, I like and enjoy working this way, is it's kind of always, 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 always just continuing to, to work, right? I'm continuing to push, to push things a little further. That's probably you see you know, in, in many of the streams, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do this today. And sometimes I do. And sometimes I'm like, eh, you know, I'm going to bounce around. This is, this is the area to me that feels like it needs the most attention right now or whatever that is. I'm kind of just focusing there. So I got like this kind of dead zone in here.
is sort of that foreground element that we were hinting at here. We'd render that out and either try to do it in camera and depth of field, which would be harder uh, to get, but we could either do it that way or we could do it in post, which is probably the easiest way. Trying to see how far that leg goes in. This stuff isn't actually in illustration. I'd like to bring it in. So I'm just going to force it. Even if it does break it, I think it's worth getting some of this back. Also, kind of doing what I was doing before, which is, uh, you know, some of this stuff, like even these, this big one out here, isn't going to be in the scene. You know, if some of this is actual, I like the texture that this is creating, even though it's like torn polygons. Um, I think that it's going to add a cool element to it. Maybe a little similar. On the gestures that are happening. So you can see these ones are all kind of parallel, which isn't really what I intended. So I'm probably going to have to spend a little time, like, you know, adjusting them so they don't seem like they're exact mirrors of each other. Now, this is probably one that I would leave as far in the back as I can. So what I would want to do is almost like what I want is for it to still be like wherever it is. Clearly I missed it, but I want it to be here. Like I want to see it through the back because I think that would be something that would give it a really cool bit of depth. Whatever this is could have some transparency to it. It's like a tangle of stuff. We're getting there though, from here to here. Talking out our scene.
And now you can start just sculpting on the objects as if they're actual props. So I don't really, this seems as some sort of throne. I probably want to spend some time developing that a little. I think from a pure compositional standpoint and like just getting everything in, I think like this is getting close. So it'll also be pretty blurred, I think, right here. Just bouncing back and forth between mat caps kind of makes it I don't know, feel like you're getting a little bit of a different preview of something. We gotta figure out what all this stuff right behind her will be. So it feels like there's probably some decoration of sorts or something maybe that could be here. Something that's catching light. I mean, something that would be making those shadow shapes or making or is that shape or the goal is that it kind of looks like it's almost part of her but is not I think that's a pretty good block after that. I feel like I could even just start throwing textures on some of that uh, from a conceptual standpoint and just see what they look like. A lot of those tubes, you know, if they're a mossy texture, um, you know, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah, this baby in the background. All right. I think we got a good block out for the scene. We have a good direction for the tone of the scene. Probably a couple areas we still want to sculpt in the character, the face. So let's just spend some time there. All right, so let's hide that. Make 
a folder. Props. Mint. All right, so this is the symmetrical one. I'm just going to work on the head for a while. So I'm going to duplicate the head, hide the one that I'm not going to work on, and just spend a little time on that. So up close, you can see that it's not actually all that defined which is kind of what I want to spend some time doing, breaking it apart, figuring out what what parts of what are what, right? So I'm going to actually just do, probably end up duplicating this many times and splitting it off into several different shapes. First, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this headdress first. going to include a piece of this. So I'm going to try to just kind of replicate all I, I've sculpted this out of like one scene, one mesh or a couple different meshes uh, kind of mashed together. And so what I really need to do is just figure out what was the one that made it and separate it. So uh, let's start with this. I'm going to open up that other one. I'm going to eventually remove the parts I just sculpted. I think I did that in symmetry, didn't I? Cool. So I'm just kind of try to keep some of this stuff elements might even go so far as to this one I probably need to go about this far down uh, I'll do a mask or a play group of this yeah quick hotkey for that I'm going to start showing all these subtools now. So I'll have this one. We'll have this one, which is just the part on top. So I can tell you that I'm missing a small section. I don't really care if it, I'm not going to make the entire head inside of here. This one, 
Let's separate the top from the bottom. See what I do is a lot of duplication. So this is now a chunk. And ideally, this is a chunk. So what I've got now is a subtool that is this, this, and then this is the original. I do have this little piece which needs to get projected into one of these. Let's do that later. What I can do with this now is uh, obviously if I show everything, it'll all be there. That's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is probably go down to a lower subdivision level. You see when I go down, it's starting to include. It brings back those other polygroups. It's because it starts including them as I continue my way up. Go down to like a lower level. Hide everything. So just this face. That work for me. So I'm gonna lower. I'm gonna go to my geometry. Up one or two. Delete my lower subdivision levels. Split hidden. Oh, I thought that was a crash. <laughs> and that. This also has everything in there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I kind of just go through this to get, just to get all the pieces I need. So I know I have this one, which I'm going to put at the top of my list now, along with this one. Split hidden. This I don't need. This one, I got this one. This is just that top piece that we want. This is extra that we don't need. This is the original. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just that middle area, get rid of it. It's because there's a lot of polygons in here. And as I'm getting rid of this, this is going to benefit me quite a bit moving forward. It's going to save a lot of polys. Should be able to take it. Looks like I do need a little bit of what's in here. This top piece. So that's the lowest I need. 
delete the lower subdivision levels, subtool, split hidden. And the piece that I just split and delete it. And I shouldn't need this, and I should be able to have between these three pretty much everything else. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of something that's kind of hanging around there. That is totally fine. All right, so now we've done a little bit of the tedious work of splitting that thing apart. We can spend the time actually sculpting on it and painting on it. So I'm going to take my brushes here and get rid of some of the coloring that was in there because it should be going only on the other mesh. So I was using sort of like a, like a shadowing effect on a lot of that. So that should be all that mesh. A comment in Facebook or YouTube about somebody saying they want to take a compositing course, but hesitating uh, direct, but you hesitating directing to the useful compositing course. Uh, it depends on what level you are. You know, introduction to compositing is a great one. Uh, but the best way to figure that out as far as if you're considering taking a course is to reach out to our admissions team, as always. Uh, this is mostly painting in black and white, by the way. This is not, there is masks in here, but I'm painting uh, primarily just in black, in black and white. So I'm going to start pulling some of this around, pulling some of it down. I don't have any problem re-sculpting any of this if I need to, just trying to not have to do the whole thing. I even turn off poly paint. You'll see now that's, the meshes are they're much more specialized, right? So each one is doing its own thing. And because it was all one mesh for a while, I am going to have to come in and do a little bit of cleanup. You know, kind of what I'm doing right now is I'm going in and just sculpting the separation. I'm just going to carve into each other. They're not going to have perfect thickness or anything like that for this. But I will be able to dictate where where one ends and where the other begins, which is where I wasn't really able to do before. What's great about this is now I can spend the time, first off, I can give myself more topology, but now that I'm able to really define all of this, I can actually sculpt everything to a much higher level.
So even like if we load this up, uh, I find it sometimes is a little deceiving, you know, when you do this kind of work, because you're like, oh, it doesn't really feel like I'm doing anything. Uh, so I'm just going to hide everything. We'll just turn off the mesh, the coloring. And what you can start to see is how you're going to see the, the level of the quality of the sculpt uh, evolve, right? You're going to see it get significantly better because there's far, for example, when I click on this one, this mesh is 1.5 million polys. And to go up to even add, like, you know, if I try to zoom in, you can see I can't really add any details. That's one part of it. And it's also to separate all those different areas of the mesh is very difficult. Um, whereas, for example, like if I come over here, uh, now this is only 61,000 polys. It went four. It's basically a quarter of what it was before. Uh, so I can come in and add a whole another subdivision level or two of detail that I can get into. And that's just if I want to do pore level detail, wrinkle detail, all that, all that kind of fun stuff. But it does also give you a little bit more uh, ability. Something I could do and probably should do is also pull these eyeballs out. So what I would do for that is uh, I'm going to insert a sphere. Drag that. We'll get it roughly the right size and we'll try to place it in roughly the right place. Once you have it in the right spot, you can go to geometry. You can do this a couple ways. You can go modify weld mirror. What you'll notice is that it didn't actually do anything. And that's because it's only mirroring from one side to the other. It doesn't go both ways. So if I go in here and I go deformation, mirror, so it's on the other side. And then I go back in here and hit mirror and weld. It is not doing it for some reason. So we will do it the old fashioned way, which is to go under Z plugin, subtool master, mirror, merge it into the same subtool. And now it's there. That one seemed to work for some reason. So now we have this eyeball in there. It means if we ever want to actually move the eyeball around, we can. But I do want to get a little bit of some of the, the gesture that we had in here before. So I am going to carve in uh, just kind of this slit. And maybe local sim is on. So you can do this all kinds of ways, right? I'm just going to carve this in generally in the direction it was. You can also do stuff if you want the, it to feel like the cornea is bulging, uh, just kind of from a sculptural standpoint. That. We're going inward. That's gonna get us as, probably about as far as we were before. A Little bit more angularity in the previous one, but we'll be able to get I don't want to mush the eyeball shape. I could do that by just kind of doing this. But that's kind of the opposite of the point of having a spherical eyeball. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to obliterate the sculpt. And also I could just make it part of the actual time.
Now I can get in this pretty far, and I can uh, figure out the um, the level of fidelity I can take is much further now. Just gives me a way to focus that I didn't have before. This is also where if I'm doing painting on this like I am, I want to come in and like refine that a little bit further. Yeah, well, this is pretty much at the end of the stream, and I think I'm at a place where I just kind of need a noodle on this for a while. So I think we're going to wrap up the stream for the day. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. Uh, apologies for this, the crash earlier. Uh, but thanks for hanging in there. I think this is going to be a fun piece when it's all said and done. As, as we start the whole thing, which I'll turn it all on. other stuff on make sure we get this saved All right, everybody well thanks again I think we're in a good place for this maybe next week we'll be able to, to wrap this thing up but otherwise I think we'll have a pretty cool start on a, on a good illustration all right, everybody, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you guys all next week. Um, Noman will be here next week from 10 to 1. Uh, we also are going to have some fun stuff coming up around Halloween with some creatures and uh, some uh, good info sessions and stuff that are going to be on our Thursdays and our Fridays. So keep a look out at our social media for when those are going to happen, and they'll be right here on the Twitch channel or the Facebook channel or the YouTube channel that you're watching on it. So thanks again.